We hear a lot about Memphis's crime crisis and its education crisis, but there's another crisis we don't really hear as much about, and it may be our biggest challenge, our population crisis. Yeah, for decades, as Memphis grew by gobbling up surrounding areas like Hickory Hill and Cordova, it gave the false impression the city was actually growing. Check out these numbers. In 1990, we went from a little more than 610,000 people to just over 650,000 by the 2000 census. But when the annexation stopped, the numbers started falling. In 2010, the census showed us at just less than 647,000 people. Ten years later, the number of Memphians fell to 633,000. And in the past three years, our population declined to 618,000. That's a drop of 14,465 people, 5,200 just last year, or 14 people every single day. 14 people every single day. So where is everybody going? Some Memphians are moving to the suburbs, but some are moving out of the area altogether. Tonight, we're seeking solutions on what, on what we can do to turn the tide. We see evidence of the population decline all over Memphis. The blight, empty homes where people used to live, empty businesses where people used to work and shop. It's also evidence of a shrinking tax base that means less money to run the city. Memphis Mayor Paul Young made the city's population decline, especially among young people, a focal point of his first 100 days speech last April. And if you're a young person thinking that your talents would be better served elsewhere, I'm going to ask you to reconsider as well. Because quite simply, Atlanta doesn't need you. Chicago doesn't need you. New York and Nashville don't need you. Memphis needs you. His remarks got a standing ovation, and he's talking about former Memphians like William Woods, who moved to Charlotte two years ago. He told me Memphis doesn't offer enough choices for young professionals like him. I'm wanting opportunities to grow, but there aren't a lot of them in Memphis. Um, and so people seek other opportunities elsewhere. And there's the crime. The thing that I don't miss is, is the crime, and I'll, I'll say that, like for Mother's Day, I came home to visit my mom and also hang out with friends. Within the first four hours, I was welcomed with a car break-in. Mayor Young says he's laser focused on addressing the population decline. It's almost like a chicken and an egg. All of these things are connected. Uh, in order to recruit job opportunities, we have to address public safety. Uh, in order to address public safety, you have to have opportunities for these people that are making the decisions to go into a life of crime. And so from our perspective, we're working to do all of the things. Young points to the recent decision by Elon Musk to build the world's largest XAI supercomputer here as an example of a significant win that starts to change the narrative about Memphis. That's exactly the kind of thing former Hamilton High School grad Rita Morrow wants to hear about the city where she grew up. She's another professional who moved away to pursue her business career in Atlanta and now Louisville, Kentucky. I still love my hometown. Um, I take my grandchildren there because I want them to know where I grew up. Her hope for Memphis? That we start with the kids right at the ground level, educating them, making sure that they have hope for a future. William says he's hopeful Memphis might lure people like him to come home. I, honestly, I miss the food. Uh, there is hands down no comparison uh, in Charlotte to Memphis food. As the census numbers show, the population crisis did not happen overnight and it won't be fixed quickly either. We're going to continue to do the things to ensure that Memphis becomes the next great city in the South. Every few years you hear about a city that's having an amazing run like Nashville has had over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, I think it, it's Memphis's turn. So what does that look like? Recruiting new companies for sure, but the mayor says he sent his team to Detroit, which has had some success lately by deeply investing in technology for public safety, as well as new ways to prevent crime. Detroit also being praised all over the place for how infill developments are eliminating blighted neighborhoods by building the kind of homes that people want to move into and businesses naturally follow.